Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. The topic of today's video is leukemia and its classification. Without much ado, let's start. Leukemia Leukemias are abnormal proliferation of lymphoid or myeloid immature cells of hematopoietic system. I know this would have not made any sense. So, I will explain you what this actually means actually this is the gist of leukemia but one by one we'll understand what does it actually mean so chalo shuru karte hai audio jump whenever you hear the term cancer it mainly you think of a tumor it means that there is a tumor and that is what resembles cancer in a local way. But as why does leukemia confuse in that matter? Because in leukemia there is no tumor. There is no tumor in leukemia. So basically leukemia is cancer of blood, the blood cells. Now let's understand a better way. Here is the blood vessel as you can see. Now there you can see the RBCs and few platelets, WBCs. Now first understand the blood is made up in a bone. It is not produced in the blood vessel but in a bone. Whenever the in bone, as we know, bone is a hollow structure. It has a very thick outside, but inside it is hollow. So whenever we look at it transactionally, what is seen? So in bone, you can see structure like this, the thicker outside part, which is thick and gives the stability to the bone, whereas the hollow inside, where you can find out or you find the bone marrow which is responsible for the production of all different types of blood cells. So here you can see um, the red blood cells which are in their production stage from the hematopoietic system stem cell. So the RBCs you can see, you can see few platelets and you can see the WBCs and all this stuff. Yeah. Now what happens is in the developmental stage there is some problem because of which it starts producing a certain kind of cell in its immature stage and it starts growing so rapidly and it multiplies so rapidly that it starts accumulating in the bone marrow. Now here it what happens is there is overcrowding and thus it will release some cells or most of the cells into the bloodstream and that will cause more and more of those leukemic cells which will lead to clumping and this all will lead to reduction in the proper cells like bone marrow is responsible for the production of these cells right whenever there is increased production of these leukemic cells or immature cells what happens is the mature cells which help in function are reduced so ultimately the rbcs wbcs are reduced platelets are reduced and that leads to the various amount of symptoms which are seen in leukemia so here you can understand that leukemias are abnormal here you understand abnormal proliferation it can be myeloid cells lymphocytes or any kind of immature cells right so there is because there is a uh, they are in immature set. These are in arrested in a differentiation stage. It means where differentiation takes place, erythrocyte, leukocytes and these all, there it can't be differentiated. Thus, this accumulate in bone marrow and that will lead to sending it to the blood system. So, this is the basic outline of leukemia. Now, let's uh, in a broader spectrum, let's understand the symptoms of leukemia. yes okay now as i told you uh, the functioning rbcs rbcs are nothing but the red blood cells when these are reduced 
as we know the functions of rbc if there is no rbc the oxygen to the cells is reduced that will lead to tiredness or fatigueness a patient will feel tired and whenever there is no there is short of oxygen to the cells our systems recognize it and it starts breathing there will be shallow breaths so that will lead to shortness of breath and as rbcs are reduced or are less that will lead to the paleness of the skin now along with rbcs platelets are also decreased what is the main work of platelets it is for it to clot or whenever there is bleeding it will stop the bleeding but as platelets are less if there is any bleeding due to any reason it will lead to prolonged bleeding time and easy bruising like even small bruises like easily a person can be bruised now wbc we all know wbc are meant for infection to protect us from infections now if there is less wbc obviously a person's uh, susceptibility will be low so he will have more and more frequent infections now as i told you this leukemic or immature cells are more they lead to if there are excessive production that will cause weakness to the body because body is working non stop and it gives a kind of exhaustion to the body so that is why there is weakness and as you can see the, uh, in almost many cancers there is weight loss now as i have told you that this uh, leukemic cells and all the other blood cells are done in the bone structure because of that whenever there is excessive leukemia whenever there is leukemia it will also lead to bone pains and it is a generalized bone pain more than particular it is more of a generalized bone pain so this is the broad spectrum of symptoms of leukemia which is seen classification of leukemia now i bet you might have seen this diagram a lot in this uh, hematology series as we know there is hematopoietic stem cell which is later categorized into myeloid and lymphoid and myeloid in we see erythroblast megakaryocyte monoblast myeloblast which is all these neutrophils basophils eosinophil the developmental stages of both myeloid and lymphoid cells so this is the basic thing which you have been studying from a long time now so when we come to the classification of leukemia now understand the first stage where there is differentiation which later develops whenever there is this i have differentiated this whenever there is these kind of cells excessive leukemia when it happens in this part that is the initial differentiation part and later further differentiation is stopped this kind of leukemia is called as acute leukemia but whereas chronically these cells which have little bit developed but not as developed as the main cells but somewhere little bit developed than the acute cells these are termed as chronic leukemia so for example when they say acute mega mega karyoblast leukemia or acute monoblastic leukemia myeloblastic leukemia they mean that in this stage for example when they say mega karyoblast leukemia this type of cell is been increased in the cell and this is the culprit because from here there is excessive multiplication or the same kind of cell without the development understood here yeah. so whenever it happens in this it is acute leukemia whenever it happens in this stage it is chronic leukemia uh, we'll come back to this diagram again but i would like to tell you into a bit but into a bit better way so let's understand it in this way okay uh, i hope it's visible yeah okay now this is a hemopoietic stem cell right this is hemopoietic stem cell it is immature blast or any kind of cell i'm just taking for a just random this it develops and it becomes a specialized cell understood hemopoietic cell differentiates 
it becomes an immature blast and then which is developed as a specialized cell but what happens in the acute stage let's understand that what here is as i told you in this acute part that it gets stuck in this way so here the cells they get stuck in this cells and they don't multiply or they don't not multiply they don't mature further they get stuck here i hope you guys are understanding they get in stuck in this and there is no thing there is a big stop sign there is no development after this this is called as acute acute leukemia the cells become stuck in this stage and they don't mature later which will lead to acute leukemia understood now let's understand the chronic leukemia now when when there is cell it differentiates itself okay and then it goes and it matures a little bit but what happens is it doesn't mature further it doesn't mature further and it gets stuck and there is stop sign here now there is no formation of the specialized cell so this is nothing but chronic again one thing as in in the acute leukemia these cells which are in acute stage or immature stage they are not so resembling they do not resemble with the specialized cell as much and they are more you can easily find them out but whereas these cells in the chronic leukemia these somewhat resemble a little bit not completely but somewhere they look as similar to the specialized cells uh, so these are very difficult to find and they take and their life span is much larger than the main specialized cells i hope you understand the difference between acute leukemias and chronic leukemias now let's go back to this part we know about the acute leukemia chronic leukemia but they say acute myeloid leukemia acute lymphoid leukemia lymphoblastic leukemia and chronic myeloid leukemia chronic lymphoblastic leukemia that part L let me draw another box for you to be clear yes here we are now see this is the two box of acute and chronic and this is myeloid this is lymphoid so this part whenever it is my acute myeloid leukemias come into this part and acute lymphoid leukemias means these two cells when they say chronic myeloid it is these cells which are responsible when they say chronic lymphoid it is these two cells which are responsible i hope you have understood the differentiation understand which box which cells come into the box of acute and myeloid both these four that is one classification which comes under acute and lymphoid these both like that so this is the basic outside classification of leukemia so this was all now we will in our next video we will go into detail like acute myeloid leukemia its pathophysiology and all of that in a more detailed way this was all the broad spectrum type hope you guys enjoyed the video uh make sure you like share and subscribe please like share and subscribe it really means a lot and do comment if you like the video so that's it guys bye bye take care have a nice day